Hello and welcome to the Romance Track here at Continual. I'm your host, Gail C. Martin, and we're here to talk about Canem Castle series and all the wonderful uh, romance that goes with it, and particularly the new release, Ring in the New at Canem Castle. But before we start, let's have our wonderful panelists introduce themselves, starting with Anna. I'm ready for you this time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anna Sugden. Um, I write contemporary, uh, mainly hockey romance. Um, I'm the, as you can probably tell from the accent, I'm ch uh, chiming in from across the pond where it is dark, the Christmas lights are on and it's almost one o'clock. Um, and I'm delighted to be here with all of uh, these guys and be part of such a great series. Oops, Donna just ran away. <laughs> oh, great. Thanks, Donna. <laughs> see, the thing is, the door so that there'll be less noise coming in from the kitchen. And see, the thing is on Zoom, the order of faces I see, the little boxes, is not necessarily the same order everybody else sees. So that's always the fun part also on who gets picked next because my <laughs> order may look like your order. Donna, now that you're back. Well, my name's Donna McMeans. I write generally a kind of sensuous Victorian romance, but I didn't for this latest book. Every now and then <clears throat> you kind of get the urge to do something different. <clears throat> and I love paranormal. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I love paranormal. So I wrote a, a book about gargoyles. So it's, it's more of a, um, a sci-fi, well, it's not sci-fi, but it's a paranormal romance, but I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, what else can I tell you? I guess that's probably about it. Uh, I'm out here in Midwest uh, in Ohio. And if you ever need to reach me, my uh, website is www.donnamcbeans.com. I'm on Facebook and come talk to me. I won't <laughs> run away. <laughs> Just a friend she runs away from. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you'll have a chance to remind everybody of that, that contact information at the end. Uh, mm -hmm. Jeannie? Uh, hello, I'm Jeannie Adams. I am a... I'm back home in the States. Normally I'm on Anna's side of the pond for a year, uh, but I'm back home for the holidays. And I am a paranormal romance writer. I write romantic suspense, urban fantasy, and space adventure with my friend, Nancy Northcott. Very nice. Sericia? Hi, I'm Sericia Glass. Um, I write contemporary romance. I'm doing a rom-com series right now. And I also write paranormal romance and urban fantasy. And my story in Christmas at Canem Castle uh, centers around is a mashup of paranormal romance and um, my urban fantasy series. All right, and Karen. Hi, I'm Karen Crane, and I am uh, in lovely North Carolina where it's sunny and 50 degrees today, so that's delightful. I write uh, contemporary romance and I have been dabbling in the paranormal for our last two um canem uh canem uh anthology so that's been fun and i'm gail z martin and morgan bryce uh i've written under both names for the canem books as gail z martin i write epic and urban fantasy as morgan bryce i write urban fantasy and male male paranormal romance so i'm right there with you on all the spooky stuff so uh let's do a quick look back at the trick-or-treat at Canem Castle, and then the very first one, the uh, Christmas at Canem Castle. Jeannie, um, and I, I know we covered this in more depth earlier, but just for folks who may not have seen those uh, panels, can you give us a quick idea of how the heck did we get here with a, a um, fictitious castle in a fictitious town in England, and, and now we're three books in? Yeah, well, it started with Nancy and Karen and Donna at a rusty romance comment uh, conference and the three of them started talking about hey i want to write this story <laughs> what about a castle yeah a castle we love castles and so we we brought in everybody else because we all love castles and uh being an insane human i decided to draw the castle 
And so I'm the floor plan girl and the book Bible girl. But um, yeah, it's been super fun because, you know, hey, castles, ghosts, castle hotels, what's not to love, right? And we all brought, especially for Christmas, we all brought people from our other worlds, from our hockey books for Anna and from uh, Cerise from your series. And it's the Slayer series, right? Shadows, shadow chasers. Shadow, yeah. shadow chasers, yeah. And uh, Karen from Cross uh, Springs. And so we all brought people from those different worlds. We branched out a little, or at least I did on the, mine for, are from my Haven Harbor series, uh, which is that one. Um, in each of my books, it's been from the Haven Harbor series. Ghosties for me. What I love also is that this castle kind of is like the room of requirement in that if somebody needs a new room or a new locale, we just talk to Jeannie and say, hey, we need a this, where can we put it? <laughs> I have a map for that. <laughs> and then she adjusts the floor plan or the I map do. of the town, as the case may be. And the castle like Topsy just grows. <laughs> yes, we have added some things to it. Yes, yes. We added for the Christmas, we added a, a, um, uh, on, like a glass house, an orangery. We added a um, a folly out in the in the meadow. Um, we have ghosts in the towers, and then the town sort. That's when the town really took off too. Because, well, Karen, you added florists, and Anna added a caterer, and so you see, added a bookstore. <laughs> well, and the and folly had the statue that was related to Donna's. Um, historical story in uh, Christmas at Canaan Castle as mm -hmm. well. So um, we all and had gargoyles. and the all famous the gargoyles. gargoyles. <laughs> well, and I know we added the two sitting rooms that are decorated in period um, furniture and all that because we needed something haunted. Yeah, and for your story. Yeah. My, so they're yeah. sort of like the like rooms preserved in time, like Downton Abbey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now that we know where we came from, um, Anna, tell us a little bit about your stories in all of the books. Okay, so um, the Pocky series that um, you can see behind me, most of the, the, the books there are the New Jersey Ice Cats series. Um, and there is a character that goes through almost all of those books who owns a steakhouse called Ryan Gray. And readers kept asking when Ryan Gray was going to get his story. Ryan was a former ice cat who was, whose career was cut short early by injury. And so I thought, you know what? What fun to bring uh, this catering guy, the steakhouse guy, to cater the Christmas ball that we'd all talked about having. And so I brought Ryan Gray over. And the person that he was going to be catering this ball with was the woman who'd left him and walked out on him so that was fun um the, the story oh, that I, there <laughs> just a little bit um the story that in ring in the new is actually the first story that doesn't involve hockey um because this one um came about again reader requests the um the manager of Ryan's restaurant stayed behind in New Jersey when everybody else came over to cater this ball because, you know, somebody's got to run the restaurant. And so people said, well, when does Susie get a story and when does she get to go to Canaan Castle? Because that's not fair. So I thought, OK, let's bring Susie over and let's introduce her to the chef at Canaan Castle. And then funnily enough, um, the heroine, uh, of a perfect great Christmas, Ryan's uh, heroine, uh, Lydia, has a brother, Marcus, who had a very sad story and people wanted to see Marcus get his happy ever after. So you get a twofer in the, the, uh, <laughs> ring, in the ring in the new story. You get both um, Susie's story and Marcus's story. Nice. Donna, how about you? Well, I started out, I'm the only one of this group that writes historical romance. So my very first story in um, the Christmas book is a historical that's before everybody else's, before this thing ever became a hotel. So <laughs> I wrote the story and um, I had asked my readers, which secondary character 
in all of my books would you like to get have a story? And I gave them a list that they could choose from. And in my mind, I already had figured out who they would probably pick. <laughs> and I was wrong. <laughs> they, they, picked, they picked a character that I never, I just threw him in there. He was from Redeeming the Rogue. <clears throat> um, and he was just a tag along, just a, a go-to kind of a guy. His name was Ben. And they said they wanted Ben's story. I think it's some people who knew that I didn't want to do Ben's story that had <laughs> had kind of like rallied the troops to respond <laughs> that way. So I did Ben's story. And I have to be grateful because although it was hard to figure out how I was going to, because I had no real concept of this guy, um, I'm really glad because I really got to know the character much better through writing the, the novella. Uh, and I paired him up with a pickpocket, a lady pickpocket. And that's the name of the, the novella is Her Heart in His Pocket because she has to pick his pocket. Um, then Anna suggested the statue by the Folly, which is done in my book because the statue came up later of the two of them, actually with the heroine picking the hero's pocket. And that kind of inspired the story in Ring in the New because it's an ancestor. Is that right? Or a descendant? A descendant. descendant. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the contemporary person who <laughs> resulted from this union of, uh, of Ben and Elizabeth from the first story. And she is returning some artifacts back to the castle. And in the process, she accidentally awakens a gargoyle. Well, actually, it's a grotesque because a gargoyle has plumbing features to channel water away from the castle. And this is just an ugly little statue that sits on the fireplace in the room that she was in. And she awakens the spirit within that gargoyle. And what emerges is a man, I described him as a young Bon Jovi, um, with wings, long wings, and naked, totally naked. Wow. <laughs> and he's been in That's that always good. shell. I that. Yeah, he's yeah. been in that shell a long time. Uh, <laughs> so, and he has five days, five days to resolve her issues, her problems. And she doesn't have any problems, she said. So the five days is over on New Year's Eve. On that fifth day, he's going to return to dust. And I, again, asked my readers what they suggested, how I should resolve this. And I guarantee you, I did not use the resolution that anybody suggested. <laughs> so, but it's a happy, it has a good ending. It has a happy ending. Um, but well, you do all you of us who, who watched the animated Disney Gargoyles series back in the 90s with or without our kids, you know, found out <laughs> that Gargoyles are badass. So yes, go Gargoyles. <laughs> For what it's worth, I did not watch that series. <laughs> I did. So you my Gargoyles is really mine. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. But you know, that kind of opens the door to, ooh, Gargoyles can do cool things. So mm. yes, yes. Jeannie. Oh, well, my stories um, are Christmas at Canaan Castle. My story is actually between the, uh, the Earl, of, um, Earl of Mortimer, which is uh, Ward, I guess he's Ward Mortimer, the Earl of Canaan. <laughs> Did I do that right, Anna? Yes, I finally got it right. <laughs> and uh, so he is the CEO of Canaan Enterprises and runs the hotel and all that sort of thing. And uh, the heroine is one from my Haven Harbor series, my Haven Harbor Witches series, and she is a beekeeper. And she is there to uh, do some studies in the castle archives. And hijinks ensue and a ghost intervenes and there's all sorts of things to bring them together. And of course there's thievery and, and uh, mischief and suspense as well. And then in Trick or Treat at Canem Castle, um, I involved demons. So, you know, we just up the ante a little bit <laughs> with some more ghosts and so forth and so on and uh and lots of hijinks and suspense and warden b the the characters from uh christmas do show up in almost everybody's story or at least ward does given that he's the earl uh so i kind of 
I kind of let myself in for some, some adventures there because <laughs> I didn't, I didn't think about the fact that I would have to, uh, that, that Ward would have to sort of be in everyone's story. Um, but it was also very fun because uh, uh, creating uh, the castle and the inner workings and all that sort of thing. And the learn, I knew something about hotel stuff because of some other things that I had done, but um, it was interesting to sort of do some research on that and delve in that a little bit. Plus, you know, ghosts and demons, and what's not to love. Sounds good to me. How about you, Cerisia? Uh, my story is, like I said before, was it's said in my, it's a, a, a Shadow Chasers adjacent story. So my heroine uh, uh, lives in Savannah, Georgia, and she is a tea witch. So she reads people's fortunes um, in their tea leaves. Um, she runs a tea shop there. And um, she also astral travels. So while she was on the astral plane looking for a kidnapped girl, she got infected with Shadow, which is the big bad in my Shadow Chaser series. So her family sends her um, to Canaan Village to um, meet a healer and hopefully get this he uh, get healed. And also so that she can um, escape the notice of the Shadow Chaser for um, in that area, which is the main character in my books. So while she's there, she goes to this curiosity bookstore shop and she meets um, she meets a proprietor there. And when they touch, you know, sparks literally go off between them because he also astral travels. So, um, and his mother happens to be the healer that has to heal her. So um, then the rest of the story is about them trying to um, escape, you know, heal her from this ejection of shadow before it overtakes her. So author has some friends who can help her. My heroine's name is Morgan, so it's author and Morgan because I'm just geeky like that. Um, <laughs> so um, his friends end up being the shadow chaser and her 4,000 year old Nubian warrior um, cohort partner. Um, and of course she, Morgan freaks out, but they end up healing her in kind of a dangerous way um, with Kira's shadow blade, which, you know, is uh, designed to uh, eliminate shadow. So, um, and then of course, you know, she, she gets healed just in time to attend the Christmas ball. And Yay. happily ever at there's <laughs> pin and sue. Yes. Hey, Karen, how about you? I think you and I are the only ones to be in all three of the Canem Castle books so far. Although I did it under two names, so I don't know if that counts. I, I think I was that is true. Yes. So tell um, us about tell us about your stories. Well the the first one was um involved a character who didn't really appear in any of my Cross Springs books, but I had created a job for her <laughs> at a catering and party you know, planning company and created a, you know, British socialite who really wanted someone from this catering company that she loved or the party planning, you know, event planning uh, group that she loved to come over to Canem on Lettich and throw this party for her. And so, or her daughter's engagement or some nonsense. And so that's how I got her over there. Uh, but I did also create this floral shop for whatever reason in Canem on Lettich um, that had a, a long history in the town. And that's been a lot of fun because I've ended up using the floral shop in all of the stories. Um, the the one in uh, trick or treat at Canem Castle involved um, an employee at the floral shop um, whose mother also works at the floral shop. Interestingly, and you know she also has some relatives. Her grandmother happens to you know be in a coven. So you know I mean there were some supernatural elements brought in. There's a water spirit. Lots of fun things in that one. Um, so this time when I was looking to do something else in Canem on Lettich, um, the floral shop kept coming to my mind, but I had kind of done all I could think of to do with them at the moment. 
And then I thought, yeah, but they're right there on the Welsh border and she probably has other relatives in the area. So I created a cousin for her, a first cousin who lives not far away, about an hour away um, in Wales. Um, so that character actually is Welsh and has sort of a fractured family history. So when her cousin invites her to come and spend the holidays with them, you know, Christmas and New Year's, she's delighted to do that because she would otherwise be alone. Her parents are nomads who <laughs> travel around in a camper van. So she, she never knows where they are or what they're doing. So she was happy about that. Um, but then of course, in the bookshop in town, Cadwell's, a, a bookshop we keep using over and over, she meets the hero of the story who has come to back to Canaan where he lived from the time he was a child and his parents were killed in an accident. He lived with his grandparents. His grandparents are both deceased now. His grandmother's just passed. And so he has to come settle the family estate. So after their meet cute, they are working on cleaning out the attics <laughs> in the family home, which has been accumulating stuff since the early 1800s. So <laughs> they have a big job ahead of them. And she also has brought because we haven't mentioned but the the setting for or what at least comes up in all of our stories is we are having an antiques fair at the castle which is sort of like antiques roadshow something we all love so she has a necklace that her grandmother gave her before she died and it has been sitting in a wooden box in a drawer ever since she got it from her grandmother because the family lore is that it's cursed it's been cursed since it was made they're not sure quite when it was made but it's hundreds of years old so she decides to take the necklace to have it evaluated just to see is it something she could potentially sell and get rid of and that sort of thing? And she ends up learning a lot more about it than she probably wanted to know. So <laughs> it's fun. So in my three series, I brought characters in from, uh, in my three stories, I brought characters in from three different series. Uh, in Christmas at Canem Castle, Teague and Anthony come from my Deadly Curiosity series, which is written under my Gale name. And I actually wrote it into the prior Deadly Curiosities novel uh, in that series where Teague, uh, Anthony gives Teague the trip to Canem Castle for Christmas as part of his birthday present. So that was kind of set up in advance. And Teague's magic is uh, weaver magic. He can read um, spells and, and other things from cloth and of course, and. Anthony's a lawyer, he doesn't have any magic, but he's still figuring things out watching Teague. And Teague happens upon a haunted piece of embroidery that opens up a whole can of worms with a missing heir and a, um, a secret baby and family squabbles and hidden rooms. And so that was kind of fun because it all starts with a piece of embroidery. You know, we've all walked through these rooms at, at historic places and seen things that were owned by the family on display. And you're going, I wouldn't touch that if I were you. <laughs> uh, you don't know where it's been or who's still haunting it. And then in Trick or Treat at Canem Castle, I brought Ben and Eric over from the Treasure Trail series under my Morgan Bryce name. Eric used to hunt down art fraud at, with Interpol and that's how he knows the Earl. And so he, he wants to bring his partner, Ben, uh, over. Ben is a former Newark cop and private investigator. He's uh, been to Cancun once and he went to Niagara Falls, but he's never been to Europe. He's a little fish out of water here. And he's a little starstruck by finding out just how big a deal 
Eric was in his old job, although there were international mobsters shooting at him too, so there was a downside. But um, through Eric, they get to the, hang out with the, the Earl a little bit, and they happen upon a 700-year-old Knights Templar mystery. And Eric's ability to read the history of objects by touching them comes into play here. Ben doesn't have any magic, but he's good backup, and he's got Eric's back, and whatever Eric wants to do with these ghostly knights, he's right on it. Ben can see a little bit of ghosts, but nothing else. Um, and then in, in Ring in the New, I brought over Simon and Vic from my Badlands series. Uh, Simon runs a runs Grand Strand Ghost Tours in Myrtle Beach. He's a psychic medium, so he can see ghosts. He also gets visions. And as the name su suggests, part of what they do is give ghost tours around Myrtle Beach. Ben is, um, um, Vic is a homicide detective for the Myrtle Beach Police Department. No magic, but again, he backs Simon up. And of course, they run into some not so friendly ghosts with the haunted objects that show up at the uh, antiques fair and the, uh, the TV show. So they're trying to keep a malicious ghost from killing the Earl uh, because that would just ruin everything. And uh, he would be very unhappy with that. <laughs> it would, it would. <laughs> well, married you one, for a year, come on. <laughs> one of the things that's kind of fun with it is Simon insists on going on one of the local ghost tours and Vic is going, you give ghost tours for a living. <laughs> Why do you want to go on one on vacation? And he says, well, I'm not giving it. I'm, I'm, I want to see how other people do it. He pretty quickly finds out that the tour guide has a lot of enthusiasm, but no real ability as a medium. And so the whole way through the tour, the ghosts are coming up to Simon going, it didn't really happen that way. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> I did not. <sighs> She'd say something different. So he's getting this back chatter from the ghosts the whole way through the ghost tour but they have a nice time anyhow so yeah that's that's my story and i'm sticking to it now this next question to everybody um and we'll start with donna this time has three parts so the first one is did you draw from any real castles for features that you wanted at canem or did you picture any any castles that you've been to or or studied uh in your stories Second one, if you were going to visit Canem Castle, what would you do? Where would, how would you want to experience the castle? And the third part with that is, what then would you want to do in Canem on Ledwich, the, the town? So, Donna. Oh, gee. Um, no, is the answer to the first question in terms of castles that I've been to. Um, except that I do know that many old buildings have gargoyles. I have been to Notre Dame before it burned, and they certainly have a lot of gargoyles. And that's why I kind of added them to uh, Cayman Castle. So that's the first one. I can't think of, well, I've been to Edinburgh, Edinburgh, the uh, castle that's up on the hill. Um, and I think that's probably the only, I went to one other one in England, um, but that was mostly all torn down. So it was mostly a ruin. So I, I uh, can't say as I drew from any past experience there. The second question was, how would I tour Cayman Castle if I were to go there now? What would you want to do if, if you were going to stay at the castle? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> now I want to go through the whole thing because I think that's what basically what my gargoyle wanted to do, having been trapped in the same shell for uh, centuries. He wanted to go and see the castle. Uh, they talked to other gargoyles. He could talk to them telepathically, but um, he he was experiencing what it's like to walk and talk and be dressed. <laughs> He's not wandering around nude. Um, and he just wanted to see everything. That would be me. I'd want to see everything. I don't like rooms that are taped off that say closed. You can't go in here. And I would just... Um, kind of go crazy just kind of looking at and touching <laughs> as much as I can uh touching everything um yeah I kind of went on a journey with my uh, gargoyle and I'd like to see how how accurate I was actually I was very accurate because in this world things magically manifest the way you envision them so uh, uh that's what I'd like to do in okay. the village hmm? no, in the I just village, what I'd like to do 
is, and I did use the village more in this last book. I used um, the greenery, the floral shop that um, Karen had set up. And I should mention that I used one of Anna's characters, um, her professor, she conveniently wrote in a professor, a gargoyle expert. And so um, I used him in my story. And just like your ghost person, my gargoyle talks to my heroine. And when she talks to the gargoyle expert, it being a gargoyle is nothing like what he said. <laughs> So she's got the proof, she's got the, the, the detail on it. Um, but I'd like to just walk around. Um, I had at one point, at one time, I realized Jeannie's Bible kind of changed everything in my story that I'm sure was accidental. Uh, and I had thought about having my heroine go to the cemetery and into the crypt. And that's where she would find out um, about her history, which was different than what she thought it was. So I would probably do that too. Now that's not in the book. I was already past the word count uh, when I made this discovery and, and that was how I was going to fix it. But um, I think that's probably, I'd like to do the cemetery, the crib, certainly the shops that I had uh, my gargoyle visit Definitely the boar night, where I think we have included in all of our stories. Uh, and, that, and that would be it. But I'd spend more time, I think, at the castle. Okay. Jeannie, how about you? Well, first of all, I built the Bible around your story and Gail's because you two set up stuff in the past. Well, well yes, that's true. Except so I, had after, to, I had to after build my on... characters. After my I, characters left. I then. had to build on both of your characters from history. Right. So I built I built the Bible around y'all's first stories in Christmas at Canaan Castle. But for me, I think I'd want to go. It's it's based on I mean, a lot of what I see in the castle in my head is part Biltmore House, part. Uh, yeah, part, uh, part. Maybe a, a little bit of Middleham Castle, which is a ruin, but uh, um, now unlike Nancy, our our other uh, contributor. I have not been to um, the castle, uh, some of the castles in Ludlow. There are two castles in Ludlow upon which Canem is sort of based. Uh, I'd like to go see those, but <laughs> um, as to what I would want to do, let's see. Well, I'd want to explore a lot of the rooms that I've created for everybody else because I want to see what they look like. Um, I'd want to, uh, I definitely want to go up to the uh, Iron Age fort that Nancy used in her story. Uh, definitely have a drink in the pub at the Boren Night. Um, yeah, that's it. Explore the town. Explore the church you created, Gail. That'd be fun. And the and the uh, caves that you created in in Trick or Treat. Uh, so yeah, I think I'd I'd want to do a lot of exploring. <laughs> okay, Cerecia. Um, definitely. Um, well, I I have not been to any castle, so I relied very heavily on Jeannie's drawings, and those that helped me out a lot trying to figure out the lay of the land, so to speak. Um, so what I would like to visit uh, if I actually went to the castle, um, definitely looking through all of the rooms, but I think I would really like to uh, visit the uh, the conservatory. Is that yeah. that and uh, take a tour of the, the beehives and, the, and the, that whole production? Um, <laughs> and, because I just, it's, it's fascinating to me. Um, I do like to, you know, help the pollinators here in my house. Um, so I, I feel like I have an affinity for the bees. And um, in the village, uh, definitely want to have a meal and a drink at the Boar Night. And also I'd like to visit the um, curiosity shop that I created for my hero, er, um, you know, author. So I'd like to go in there. I always like curiosity shops. So, yeah. you know, finding little treasures and things like that. Um, hopefully not anything that's haunted or possessed um, <laughs> would, would be nice. Um, but yeah, that's what I'd like to do. Very nice. Karen. Well, I, I have been to castles, but only in uh, Germany and Austria, none in England. Uh, so I, I tend not to actually base my stories in the castle itself or in the hotel. 
it's tend I tend to use it more as backdrop. <laughs> I have people, you know, having tea at the, you know, at the at the um, the little tea house or having a meal um, or just in their, you know, in their room, their guest room. So I haven't used it quite as much, although I did have um, the chapel, the round chapel um, as a, a big part of the first story that I did at Christmas at Canaan Castle. So I don't have a lot of um, ideas about what it should look like, except for what I have gleaned from everyone's stories and from the, the maps and the story Bible. Um, but I'm very intrigued. I would love to go and see the gardens. That to me would be, you know, the place to go. I want to go to the gazebo. I want to, you know, explore the gardens. Um, like Cerisia, I want to see the beehives. I'm fascinated by all of that, by the kingdom honey. Um, I would love, though, to explore the town. Kingdom on Ludditch in my head. <laughs> I have such a picture of what the streets in this town look like. I've, you know, I've given people apartments. I've created homes. <laughs> I've got, you know, roads leading out of town. I created a whole forest. I, you know, there's a lot <laughs> going on in the area that I would like to explore. Would I go to Saxon's Hundred Wood, even though it was, you know, haunted haunted by you know a wood spirit yes yes i would i would go there um so yeah i would like to do a lot of exploring in the area a lot sounds good to me anna um well for obvious reasons yes i've been to the odd castle or two over here i haven't actually been to ludlow which is the one that um nancy was inspired by um but I have been to many others and, um, you know, it's always great fun going to see all of these things um, and getting a real feel for them. Um, and uh, as far as the castle itself goes, um, one of the um, things that we came up with, Donna came up with the idea of, um, a true love gargoyle. So if you kiss in front of the true love gargoyle, um, then, you know, your your true love will last forever and so on. And we had to find somewhere to place this true love gargoyle. Um, and I'm a church bell ringer. I'm a learning church bell ringer. It takes a long time to learn how to ring church bells. Um, and so at the top of the round chapel, we added a ringing room. Um, and that's based on um, the, a lot of the ringing rooms that I've rung in. And so that's fun. So I'd actually like to go to the ringing room, take my hero with me and kiss in front of the gargoyle <laughs> and, and also ring some bells. Because, <laughs> you know, um, and I'd like to go to the folly and see the statue and um, of Donna's characters because I think that would be really cute and also wow. into the herb garden and see the fountain because in my story there's something fun in that in that garden um, as far as the the town itself goes um, yeah I'd love to just go to all of the little shops I'd love to go to the, the curiosity shops I'd love to go to the bookshop and you know and see that go to have a, a drink and some of the nice pies in the the Bora night and then see what um, happens to the Lamb and Bee, which is another pub, which is derelict, but which will be hopefully restored. Um, so yeah, I just, but it's also fun because um, like you guys, you probably don't travel a lot in your, as much in your area as you would um, when you go other places. So for me, it would be fun to just go to a place within our country and see, see it, you know, explore it. I think for me, and I just posted a bunch of castle photos from our somewhat whirlwind tour a number of years ago in the UK, in which I tried to squeeze in as many major tourist attractions in the entire UK as possible in 14 days or less. Um, everyone survived. But um, we, did a lot of, we did a lot of castles. 
although I, I am sad there are apparently 34 castles in Wales and we only got to two of them. So bucket list. But um, especially for like the, the Great Hall in Canaan Castle, I was picturing a combination of Hogwarts and the, um, the big main room at Stirling Castle in Scotland because it's got the same kind of big uh, trusses in the ceiling. And so mm -hmm. that was kind of my thought for that. Um, if I was, so I would love to just tour the castle like a tourist and, and see all the major things, but mostly I want to go to the tea shop and the gift shop because that's what I do. And <laughs> at, um, Cardiff Castle in Cardiff, Wales, they had a marvelous tea shop set up in what had been like the gatekeeper's house right at, at the entrance and the food was fantastic and the tea was fantastic. So my characters visit the tea shops a lot because that's what I would do if I was there. And then they'd stop at the, at the gift shop and pick up a Christmas ornament because that's what I would do if I was there. As far as the town, um, there's another tea shop in the town that's part of the yarn shop. So I would be right there and I'd hit that, that uh, curiosity shop and the bookstore. But I'd also wanna go to the Boren Night because in, in my mind, and I think I was the one who contributed a lot of the pictures to the the yeah. sense of, of what the, the tavern looks like, the pub. I was kind of basing it on Yield Trip to Jerusalem, which is one of the oldest pubs in London, or so I was told, the dates from like the 1100s. It was basically the last beer on the way to the Crusades, and it's <laughs> tucked into a cave beneath Nottingham Castle, that Nottingham, and it just, um, it, it had so much ambiance. Uh, because it's been there since 1187 and it also had good beer so I would want to go there and drink the beer and, and yeah you can see I travel on my stomach so yes that would be what I'd be doing. <laughs> well folks we are almost out of time so I want to go around and have everybody uh, let everyone who's watching and listening know where they can find you online and if you have any other new book upcoming book recent book in addition to whatever Canaan Castle book you're in, please let us know about that too. Starting with Cerecia. Um, Well, you can find me online at uh, my website is www.cereciaglass.com. I'm on Twitter at Cerecia. Uh, Instagram is at Cerecia Glass. Uh, and my Facebook is author Cerecia Glass. And my, um, my next thing coming up is my very first rom-com. It's called The Love Con, which is set around a fake reality cosplay show. Um, so there's lots of, and there's fake dating, friends to lovers, all of that good stuff, and lots of hijinks and mayhem and foolishness. So uh, looking forward to that because it comes out on Tuesday. I'm so awesome. excited for that book. I cannot wait. <laughs> great, great awesome. reviews coming in for it yes. as well. It's so exciting, Theresia. I'm so excited about all of that, yes. <laughs> Karen. Um, well, basically, uh, I am not doing a lot of writing these days. Um, the pandemic has sort of shut that down for me. <laughs> so, Kana, the ring in the new is all I have out that's new. Um, my Cross Spring series is still up. And I do have actually a, as I, as I told you guys last time, a finished Cross Springs novel that I have never gotten around to publishing but which I do plan to get out there one of these days so um, <laughs> people can find my website um, and links to my books uh, descriptions and some excerpts at um, karencrane.com and that's Karen with a C. All right Anna. Um, okay so the uh, my website is Anna Sugden S-U-G-D en.com um, because for some reason uh, people across the pond like to put the d first don't know why um, i'm on facebook um, i'm on twitter uh, as anna sugden same spelling um, and uh, the new jersey ice cat series is all still available uh, it's been republished um, apart from the fifth one which is still with harlequin um, I also have Hot on the Ice, which is published a part of the New York Dockers series published by Entangled. Um, and I'm working on some more stories for the New York Dockers series and a new series, which has 
only a teeny bit of hockey in it, but the rest of it is not hockey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Donna. Well, I put out um, her heart in his pocket came out earlier this year as a freestanding novella. You can always find that. Um, and my agent is currently shopping a book on, um, it's part of my Rake Patrol series. And I call it How to Bait a Dangerous Rake. But of course, uh, we as the authors don't necessarily have the say as to what the title will ultimately be. So I can't give you a title as to how that one will come out, but I love that book. So I hope she oh, finds a, a home one. for it soon. Um, other than that, I think those are my only two uh, writing things that are coming out right now. Can, do we have time for me to tell you a little story? Yes. Um, I just was going to say that some of you are aware that I received a gargoyle in the mail. A tiny little gargoyle, he is very cute, uh, but he had no card, no explanation. Who in the heck sent him? And I tried to do my research. I tracked down the, um, uh, the shop that shipped it. They said they had nothing but just my address to send it to. And it was shipped from Oklahoma. I'm in Ohio. Quite a difference in, in place, but I do have a niece that lives in Edmond, Oklahoma. I thought for sure it was my niece that sent it. No, it wasn't her. <laughs> nor, was it her nor was it her father, who <laughs> is my brother, who I had talked about gargoyles with. Um, I thought maybe he was there for Thanksgiving, but no, wasn't him. I suspected you guys, maybe you had shipped it because you had read uh, Dancing with Gargoyles, uh, but no. No one stepped forward. I have found the culprit. It is a friend of mine. I've been helping her write a memoir. She said she did have a card, but the shop collected to put it in the box that was shipped. But I did want to pass that along. Um, if you want to find me, please send a card with it. <laughs> but, um, you can find me at uh, DonnaMacBeans.com. And you spell MacBeans. I have a similar problem as Anna does with my last name. It's M-A-C. M-E-A-N-S. And I tell people to think of it as a Big Mac, then a mean person, and make it plural. <laughs> uh, and and that, would, that way you would find me. I don't do a lot of social media. I find it affects my, added, my outlook in a way that I don't really like. So uh, you can find me on Facebook. Um, but that's currently, that's about it. Uh, and, but I do do a newsletter, a monthly newsletter. And from my newsletter, you can get free books. You can get, um, participate obviously in a number of, uh, polls. Um, I try to keep it. I do interviews with other authors. I try to keep it interesting. So visit my website, sign up for the newsletter, get a free book as a, uh, consequence. And, uh, that's about it. Nice. Jeannie? Well, I'm. You can find me mostly at genieadams.com. Um, I'm frequently on the hive of scum and villainy that is Twitter, um, usually on Facebook and Instagram. I'm here on continual a whole lot. <laughs> uh, I don't have a lot out that's new simply because I am in um, school. I may have returned to school to, uh, to be a student. So, uh, But I should have some things uh, publishing after the first of the year and I'll keep everyone posted on that. <laughs> Awesome. And I'm pretty easy to find at gailzmartin.com and morganbrice.com. I'm inter intermittently on Twitter, but I'm on Facebook all the time, Instagram, got a YouTube page, um, all that kind of thing. The newest book um, is uh, The Devil You Know is coming out in January, and that is the next book in my Witchbane series. And we also have a new book coming out in the... Uh, uh, Joe Max series from uh, Falstaff. So that'll be coming out in uh, January as well. And then all of 2022, I'm in a uh, special prolific works giveaway called Your, Your Book Boyfriend's Boyfriend, uh, <laughs> which is January 1st. Try saying that five times fast. Um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> comes out January 1st. There are over 100 uh, male male romance authors 
all of us wrote original stories for uh, the giveaway. It's on Prolific Works and it will uh, start January 1st, but you can get some sneak peeks and some information about it on its Facebook page by the same name. So of course, I'm always on continual. Well, thank you so much, all of you, for spending some time today to talk about Canaan Castle and the town and, and the series. And thanks to all of you for watching and listening. We're, uh, there'll be more romance here on Continual, so we'll see you online.